With Tears of the Kingdom coming soon, this might be my last chance to get a life for a long, long time. So that's exactly what I'll be doing today. By seeing how fast I can get a life in every Zelda game, starting with the original Legend of Zelda on the NES. Alright, so according to my research, the first step to getting a life is acquiring bombs. So we'll take this old man's sword and start slaying everything in sight until we can buy some. Once we do that, we'll just head down to this spot here to bomb a hole in the wall and get a life. On to Zelda 2 Adventure of Link, where all we have to do is make our way out of the starting area, head down this beach, dodge some death bubbles, and walk over to this spot here where we can get a life. Zelda 2 is a bit special though, because there are actually three different ways to get a life. One way is to level up to upgrade our health, and for the final life, we'll make our way down here to collect a mini Link doll, which is actually a one-up in this game. Yes, this is a Zelda game with lives. Next up, we've got Link to the Past, and I've always loved the intro part of this game. It's rainy, the bad guys have taken over the castle, so you gotta sneak your way in, only to find that Uncle Mustachio is all shreked up, so you take up his sword and immediately forget he exists for the rest of the game. Then after some very careful, stealthy maneuvering past the soldiers inside the castle, we can eventually rescue Zelda and lead her out of the dungeons where we can get a life. You may now kiss the bride. Link's Awakening is an interesting one because there are actually more pieces of heart in this Switch remake than the original version of the game. But we're playing on the DX version, so that means in order to get a life, we'll need to grab our sword, head up to the forest, turn this raccoon into Mario, and then head to the first dungeon, where once we beat it, we're rewarded with a life. Onto my favorite Zelda game, Ocarina of Time, where to get a life, first what we'll need to do is head over to this chest to grab a sword, and then collect 40 rupees to buy a shield, so we can get past the true villain of the game. From there, we'll walk into this tree's gaping mouth hole, play with some bugs for a little bit, and then poke this spider in the eyeball so we can get a life. Onto Majora's Mask, and let me tell you guys, this game is not designed for getting a life quickly. During the first three day cycle, we're able to get up to the clock tower here in a pretty decent time, but this is just a part of a life and we want the full thing. So the only way to do that is to sit here and do absolutely nothing for the next 25 minutes until we're finally able to go into the clock tower. After we go back in time and turn back into a human, we can collect three more heart pieces by doing some parkour, dropping down a hole to kill a giant pineapple, and then finishing up with some lumberjack work to finally get a life. Next up is Oracle of Ages, and after the intro sequence that causes all monkeys to disappear, we'll do a little time traveling and get the most magical item in any Zelda game ever. The shovel. And with this ancient artifact, we're able to dig our way into this cave to save a baby tree, travel back to the present to get fire in a bag from that tree that's all grown up now. With that, we can enter the first dungeon of the game, and after slaying Mr. Pumpkinhead, we can get a life. Now for Oracle of Seasons. After the intro sequence, we'll head down to this cave to solve the most complicated, treacherous puzzle that no one has ever been able to even come close to solving in order to get the fabled wooden sword. And with that sword, we're now able to smack this tree out of its slumber, giving us a key to the first dungeon where after completing it, we're able to get a life. Onto four swords, and I don't know if you guys know this, but this game is actually not meant to be played with one person. So things that would probably be pretty quick normally ended up taking a lot longer for me. But I was able to manage playing along with my best friend, and eventually we made our way to the end of the Sea of Trees where we can get a life. Alright, next up we've got the Wind Whacker. We'll start off by visiting Grandma and changing into our jammies. Then after witnessing a bird kidnapping, we'll sail off after it with our new pirate friends. Once we're at Bird Fortress, what you want to do is intentionally get caught and thrown into jail. Grab this nearby heart piece, get uh, intentionally caught again, and then... Uh, get intentionally caught again before finally making your way up to the top where we immediately get yeeted over to Windfall Island. But that's good because here we can forget all of our problems and get a couple more heart pieces by playing Battleship and Hide and Seek with a group of children. 
Now with only one more heart piece to go, we'll set sail on our talking boat over to Dogpaw Island here, where we can fall down this hole and open this chest underground to finally get a life. Oh wow, and it only took a little over two minutes. Look at that. Ah, right. Next up is the Minish Cap, where we'll start by following Zelda into town to spend some time in Hyrule Market. Oh my, Princess Zelda, you've won a grand prize in our drawing. Wow, you get your choice of any of these wonderful prizes. What will it be? Oh, perfect, a heart container. We'll definitely take the heart container. Zelda, uh, go ahead and choose that, please. Uh, no, 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 Zelda, really, it's fine. I, I don't need a shield. I'm just trying to get a life here. Uh... Anyways, we'll just let Zelda get turned into stone, head over to the forest, grab a heart piece, then team up with a magical duck hat that can make us tiny. From there, we'll head to Smurf Village, grab another heart piece, and make our way through the first dungeon of the game where we can grab two more heart pieces to get a life. Unlike the original Four Swords, Four Swords Adventures was actually designed with a single player version of the game. So after pushing some blocks, starting some forest fires, and exploring some caves, we can get a life from this chest here. Ah, uh, Twilight Princess. I haven't played through this game in a long time, so part of me just wants to take my time and enjoy playing through it casually, but the title of the video isn't how fast can you get a life while playing very, very slowly to appreciate all the small details in every Zelda game. So for this video, I'll be doing my best to play quickly, which means I'll be skipping all of the cutscenes. As I was doing this though, I was chuckling to myself thinking about a scenario where someone is playing through this game for the first time, but also happens to skip all of the cutscenes. It would be so confusing, but like in a funny way. For example, this part here where you're sneaking over to the springs to get Epona back, and now you're a dog in a prison cell. Anyways, to get a life in Twilight Princess, we need to progress pretty far through the game, past the entire first dog section, followed by the first dungeon, where we gotta smack this baboon's booty and eventually kill this big baba over here to get a life. On to Phantom Hourglass, where we'll make our way through the intro island, make a new friend, and set sail across the Great Frog Sea to get to the first dungeon of the game. And once we're inside, we'll very quickly take some important speedrunning notes, make our way through the dungeon, and defeat the boss to get a life. Now for Spirit Tracks, we'll start by taking a nice little train ride up to the castle. Oh, uh, overshot that a little bit. We'll just, uh... And after meeting up with Zelda, we'll just skip a few cutscenes to save some time. It's fine. I'm sure nothing important is happening in any of these. Uh, she is dead. Anyways, let's shred some pan flute, head to the first dungeon, take some more important speedrunning notes, and slay this big stinky farty boy to get a life. Skyward Sword is similar to Twilight Princess in how there's a lot of intro story building stuff you need to do before you can get a life. The biggest difference though is that you can't skip any of the cutscenes in this game. That isn't a huge deal because I like the story of this game, but again this video isn't uh, how much can you enjoy the story in every Zelda game. So this is going to slow us down quite a bit, but after passing our flying training and picking up the Skyward Sword, we're ready to head to the surface to put our skills to the test. With those guys out of the way, we'll continue through Farron Woods and pick up this piece of heart on the way to the Skyview Temple. But before we go in, we'll head back up to the sky first to vandalize this tavern for another piece of heart. I love that part so much. And then grab another one in a chest on this island here before heading back down to the surface. Now that we're finally inside the temple, once we take out this Stalfos and claim his prized golden beetle, we can use it to hit this switch up here, which opens the gate to our last heart piece to get a life. To get a life in A Link Between Worlds, we need to do a lot of running around and talking to people first. We need to talk to Link Jr., Link Jr. Sr., the Easter Bunny, Impa, Zelda, uh, Sasha Hasrula, until finally we're able to enter the first dungeon of the game, and after we slap this clown around for a little bit, we're able to get a life. Finally, we've got Breath of the Wild, where after waking up from our hibernation, we head out into the world and over to the first shrine. And we'll just place this bridge down. We'll just place this bridge down. We'll just place this bridge down to finish the first shrine. 
Next, we'll complete the bomb trial. And now that I have bombs, I can do a speedrunning trick to launch... So we're just gonna walk, and once we finish the last two trials, Santa flies in to tell us to meet him at the Temple of Time. Once we get to the Temple of Time, duh, bruh, we can get a stamina vessel. Just kidding, we can get a life. And for the final results, here's how long it takes to get a life in every Zelda game from slowest to fastest. Now I can binge Tears of the Kingdom in peace. Thanks for watching, and if you like these kinds of videos, consider subscribing. Also, I started a Patreon, so if you'd like to support me that way, the link for that is in the description.